Hey guys, Doubt here. Dark and Darker had a pretty decent content patch yesterday. The servers were down for about six hours, but in my opinion, it was well worth it. There's a few different things that I'm not gonna cover in this video. For one example is the ability to play the game for free but only being able to play normals instead of high roller. But what I want to actually go over and focus on are the changes to gameplay. And in my opinion, these are all big W's. If you disagree with any of these things that I'm saying, as always, let me know down in the comments. I'm always up for discussion, but I made sure to test out all these different things and I personally have been having a blast. So without further ado, let's talk about health. Okay, so I think I did the math right on this. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm pretty sure every class has an increase of 15 base health, which puts bards at 111. Clerics at a pretty solid 110. Wizards still only have 95, but that's a whole lot better than I think the 80 that they had before. Warlocks are up to 112. Barbarians have a solid 153 health. Yes, this is with robust, but if you're playing Barbarian, you're pretty much just always going to have this perk anyway. Fighters are following their 15 trend with a total health of 115. Rogues can maybe take two or three hits now that they have 105 health instead of 90, which again, I think is great. And finally, Rangers are at 105. And you might be thinking that more health just makes tanks better, but it's just a base increase for everyone, which is really just taking the fights and changing them to, I don't need to worry if I'm the first person to get hit. I still have an opportunity. I just need to play the rest of the fight better. And I think that's really good for this game. And then to even double down on that further, gear has also changed. A lot of the stats have been reduced. So you can only get plus one add or truth is on your pieces of gear instead of two or three, which is still just elongating the fights more and making it to where gear isn't the only thing that really matters. With less damage and more health, it's really less about gear and more about your skill expression and how you're able to play the game and counter your opponents. And I think that that is very much long overdue because having a more equalized playing field will really make it to where the better players are going to win rather than, oh, this guy has nine trufas. I'm in base kit. I'm not gonna be able to do anything. All right, and talking about gear further, I went into the squire because all of the gear is basically here for bard and it's easy to see. All of the gear now has less movement speed penalties. For example, this poo point used to be minus 10, now it's minus eight. Light Akaten is now minus six. Regal Gambison's minus 10. Wanderer attire dropped one to minus four. Loose trousers are only minus two, so they only need to be uncommon quality to be gaining move speed from wearing these. And that's basically just across the board. Everything that reduced move speed now reduces it even less. I also think this is a good thing. The reason being is that our move speed is capped at 330. In base kit, you're at like 300 roughly, 290 to 300 depending on what class you're playing. Now, in most situations, if you fully kit into something, say you're playing lizard so you don't need a hat, you're only at 290. And these dark leathers used to bring you to 290 all by themselves. Add in boots, you're still at 300. You don't have to be base kit anymore, or you don't have to be missing pieces of gear to still have decent move speed. And, and at the same time, a lot of people have been complaining that fighters and barbarians can get to move speed cap very easily. Well, guess what? Now every class can. I'm only at 308 here, but with my buffs, I'll be at 319. So if a fighter sprints at me and I already have space, he should never be able to reach me. If I'm playing a class like Ranger or Rogue, this same kit will probably be like 315 to 320 move speed. So now every class should be fine because they either are able to hit these insane move speed numbers anyway, or with proper spacing and ability usage, for example, wizards using haste to match a fighter sprint, you should be able to do the same thing and you're gonna be completely okay. The only class that's still somewhat struggling in this regard is cleric, but even then they're still better off than they were before. Another change that's really important for gameplay is mostly really affecting rogues. There is a sound cue that is very loud, and it happens every time a rogue stealths. So as soon as I heard that, I turned around and I still played this awfully, I killed him, but I died anyway. It's whatever, I was in normals trying out the new shield, but it happens. Anyway, be aware of that noise. I'll play it again for you real quick.
And now we're going to move on to my two personal favorite changes from this patch. The first being that there is no dark swarm in the goblin caves. Instead, the caves will eventually cave in and you'll be crushed underneath all of the rock and rubble, unable to take your loot out of the map. But before I show you that, here is one of the fighters who tried to kill me and I just literally kited him around this room until I decided I wanted to go in. And a lot of people think this is rat gameplay, but I'm playing bard and he had plate gear on so he counters me and I need to do this. Since he was relatively close when he started to sprint at me, I just put my weapons away and walked for a minute. And just like Cyclops has a rockfall phase, now Goblin Caves in general just has a rockfall phase. The first rocks hit with 7 minutes and 10 seconds left in the match. And this first part really isn't that bad. You can drink a health pot after the first couple and you'll peel back up the full. It's really not bad at all. But there's a secondary phase. I'm going to let this run for a second and then we're going to skip to the next one. When I first saw this... I was genuinely freaking out because there's dust everywhere, it looks really cool, it shakes your screen, it just genuinely feels like it's happening and I really like that. It just makes so much sense with the map. And this is just coming from someone who's always liked the idea of goblins, who has always liked this map and it's probably my favorite out of the three maps. I know blasphemy, but it's how I feel. I really like the map and I think this just adds to it instead of taking away from it. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the second of three rock pull phases. At some point between 310 and 305, I've been trying to figure it out just re-watching this and I genuinely can't. They happen every like two seconds. So it just adds up damage a lot more. It's still not a big deal. I ended up just using a surge kit and a campfire. I have a ton of heals on me and it wasn't a problem at all. But if you get hit by a mob or you get hit by two mobs and this is happening or you're trying to fight a boss, it's definitely something that will take away from what you're doing and it could get in your way. It could even kill you. I don't think it's the scariest thing in the world. I think more so than anything, it's like the lack of sound because every two seconds you hear a loud crash and your screen shakes more so than the damage that's really affecting you. And after this, I basically just stood by the static that I had. I put down a campfire. I just hung out. I didn't think that it was going to get any worse than this because how could it get worse than this? I was wrong. In the last 10 seconds of the game, I got up, I started heading toward my exit, I left, but it was genuinely terrifying. I'm just going to skip to that now. I'm genuinely just sitting here smiling, like listening to the sound effects again. I really, really like this change. And lastly, we have a new weapon, a new shield, a new both of those things for fighters and bards. This is the lantern shield, and it's probably my favorite thing that I've ever seen in Dark and Darker. It's basically a shield that works as a long sword, but it also has like dagger knuckles. Not only that, but you can press R and it turns into an oil lantern. So when your shield's up, you have a little light in front of you. For those of you that don't play bard, bards basically never carry torches because if they do, five out of their six utility bars cannot be used for heals. So they usually drop their torches so they can have their four instruments and either a protection pot and a health pot or a health pot and bandages or a health pot and a surge kit. You really only have two slots available and so you never have light. Well now you do. And while this weapon is probably better for fighter because they have perks that are able to use it better, 
Bard is able to use it just as well in that they have a light source. It's really good for both classes, and it does have one big downside, and that is, unlike the buckler that only has like minus seven move speed, this has minus 16. So if you're running it with a falchion, it's not really the best. You're gonna lose a lot of move speed, but with a rapier, minus 13 and minus 16 isn't really bad. And if you really need to, and you're playing bard, you have superior dexterity, so you can just press X and start running almost immediately. But it definitely is a skill weapon. You need to know how to use it and you need to know how to use it well. I was practicing for a while and I was still messing it up. So basically you block like normal. And then as soon as you block the hit, you need to right click again. If you do it too late, you do that awkward wiggle that I just did a few seconds ago where you put your shield up and down and that's not good. You want to do it basically as soon as whatever is hitting you hits the shield. So it takes timing and it takes aiming your shield in the correct direction and both of those things together honestly make it feel like a really fun weapon it's like a long sword that a bard can use now as a side note if you want to practice this the kobolds were pretty easy and the skeletons were also relatively easy as long as you know their attack patterns i was able to carry off the goblins but you have to crouch and honestly it's a little awkward I wouldn't recommend using this against goblins, like you might as well just use your rapier. But anything else, again, you probably might as well use your rapier, but if you're wanting to practice, like the skeletons and the kobolds really aren't too bad to block and parry off of. And the other thing about parry weapons, just like the longsword, it's a lot harder to parry stabs. So if you're fighting someone who has a rapier, or if you're fighting someone who has daggers like a rogue, this probably isn't the best option falchions can be parried pretty easily any cleric weapon can be parried pretty easily and i have a fight against a barbarian that i'm about to show you where i parried a bardiche basically any overhand or any side swing is pretty easy piercing weapons are a lot more difficult all right so let's get to the fight and then i'm gonna wrap this video up so I heard somebody on the other side of the store, and so I went in, I didn't see him, I thought he was in the sewer, so I turned on my lantern so I could see him. It's crazy that I'm able to do that now, but he wasn't there, he was actually on the side, and this fight got really awkward in like 10 seconds when a wraith tried to body block me from behind. I was able to get a nice parry off, but then I had to leave because it was just really awkward. We were able to find him again and this fight was really awkward because I had the axes behind me so I couldn't really kite. I was trying to and was probably just doing worse for myself than better and so eventually I just decided you know what I'm gonna all in if I die I die. If I get this parry off I have a pretty decent chance and honestly the barbarian probably had a pretty good go if he just ran at me through the axes. I'm at half health right here instead he backed up the heal too and I think I only hit him like once. But instead, he just got upset with how I was playing it, and uh, you'll see that in a minute too. Here's the fight. Savage Roar means we don't fight yet. We need to wait for the debuff to go away. I know he's not 1 HP, but this is where I decided to all in. The shield is so cool. I'm definitely gonna be using this a whole lot more. Anyway, I think it's about time that we start wrapping up this video. 
Dark and Darker hasn't really had any content patches in a while, so I was definitely excited to see that there was changes, and I really enjoy each and every one of these. Every fight feels more skill-based now, both between the shield, the increased health, and the lower damage. I'm mostly just playing on normals because I'm trying to get the shield down, and I really like it. I can't say that enough. And the Goblin Caves change also feels really nice because if you want to route around the map now you can there's no circle closing you into fights or if you want fights you either just go to the center of the map or you go to cave troll or cyclops where all of the loot's going to be on the map anyway so all in all i really like this patch if you agree let me know if you don't agree let me know why because i really like open communication discussions things like that and i'm down to chat with you about it in the comments or on my discord and speaking of discord i have a community discord it's still relatively small but i'm trying to grow that along with my channel so if you want to join it i'm gonna have the link in the description below feel free to click that come by and say hey also if you enjoyed this video please give it a comment like or consider subscribing to the channel all of those three things help me and i really appreciate all of you who do it and as always i hope that each and every one of you have a very great day and i hope to see y'all next time peace